I don't know if any of you guys knew this, but I have thought about starting this podcast for about a year and it literally makes me shake now that I'm like talking about it and we're recording. Um, but it's really mind blowing because when you have everything rolling and it's coming into fruition, it just, it's the most insane feeling and we're here and I'm really excited to start this podcast and have you guys listen on just like conversations that I have with people that inspire me every day. The purpose of this podcast is to just show you that we all live crazy different lives and um, it's crazy how our lives can bring you to certain places and make you into the person that you are today and I have my story my guests have stories and I want you to understand where they came from just so that you are able to I don't know see life a little bit differently and be more understanding to people that you meet day to day because you really don't know where they came from until you hear their story and um yeah I just found it really inspiring to meet my clients and my friends and hear their stories on how they came their upbringing and whatnot and it's it's really fun to be able to relate to certain things and learn new things from them and I'm just really excited to um have you meet my first guest well I guess you're not meeting her but if you're watching the live footage then you are um So this person is very important in my life. She and I met in junior high when I went to a private school. I did not do well at all. I did not fit in. I did so badly. Like, you thought I was Asian and I'd be smart. Totally wrong. Um, But she's the polar opposite. She's driven. She's motivated. She does everything with like determination and I kind of I don't know how to say this but I kind of gave up when it came to act it came to academics but she pushed herself until the very end and yet she's also very successful in her business and being an entrepreneur and It's just so crazy to be able to be here with her and have you, like, understand her and all this stuff. And um, so without further ado, I wanted you to meet my really best friend, uh, Francine Vasquez. I would love for you to introduce yourself, tell them what you do, um, how old you are, all that jazz. Okay. I'm Francine. I'm 22 years old. I own two businesses one has really nothing, it has nothing to do with like my career path, but so I own a security system business and <laughs> so random licensed contractor, whatever is fine. Yep. And I own a lash and brow business where I do lash extensions, teach courses, permanent makeup, things like that. So, and how long have you been doing lashing and all that stuff in the beauty industry? Beauty industry for lashes, particular two years, and then brows is probably a year. That's coming up on a year this month, yeah. That's so crazy because, like, I remember, I think it was during COVID, you were posting a lot about you starting, and I, honestly, if I'm going to be honest, I did not know how long you're going to do that for, and if Um, you were going to, like, flourish with it. I honestly had no choice. So I, COVID was a difficult time for me because I was a healthcare worker, but we were in lockdown. So I was working emergency patients only. And I'm also a college student. I am a full-time student, graduating soon. But at that time... What's your major again? uh, Biomedical sciences and global health. I was going to be a dentist. So total (laughs) change in careers. You went from this route, this route, and then you're... Um, No. (laughs) Yeah, I'm graduating, but I'm not going to go to dental school. But anyways, I was working as a dental assistant, getting paid maybe for two hours of work every day. Instead of like 10 to 12 hours, which I was previously working consistently. Okay, but I can relate to that because when I used to work at my mom's nail salon, I would get paid through just like the tips that I would make from my clients. So not jack shit. Yeah, (laughs) no, literally. And then I would say like, can I get paid for the time that I'm here for? And they're like, why? Your family. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) love that for us. It's 
it's funny what we do for our families, but we wouldn't change it. I know you were the same. Yeah, I really wouldn't. You and I are the same. It, it kind of shaped us to be the people that we are today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you just got back from Paris. Yes. How long were you there for? I was there for five days. Five days. And what did you do? Tell me everything about it. Because oh I haven't heard anything about it. Okay, we actually ate a lot of Asian food in Paris. Kind of Girl. funny. <laughs> <laughs> we ate French food too, but we were just, I don't know more drawn to Asian food everywhere we go. Was it good? It was so good. That's and surprising. the sushi is so much cheaper. Lots of shopping. I think we went to like every group of luxury stores just to see because it's Paris and I guess that's... You went into the Louis store? No, I went you to did. Chanel and Dior and I think that's it. Just different variations in different locations. Yeah, I wouldn't stop in the Louis store either, if I'm going to be yeah. honest. I know I, I know, I know I named my dog Louis for, like, Prince Louis and, like, mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton. But I've been calling him Leo because just the thought of, like, Louis Vuitton yeah. pisses me off now. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be pissed off at my dog, so. No, exactly. I mean, they were kind of rude to you, right, at a store? Oh, they were so, oh, my gosh. So, it was me about to turn 19 and I have this thing for my birthday where I save up enough money so that I can walk into the store pick something and buy it mm -hmm. my thing is when I go into a designer store I don't just walk around and look I don't like to be that girl that's just like oh I'm just looking you know what you want I know what I want yeah. I do my research Straight to the point. and if I'm gonna go in there I'm gonna buy something mm -hmm. and I don't know if that's like stupid or whatever because I mean I feel like people did you're like breaking research the bank. <laughs> like I know. to get the person they want so yeah but I, I genuinely just like every so I walked into the Louis store in Scottsdale and I was just kind of like a normal college girl just like casual off outfit and I had my Gucci like crossbody on mm -hmm. so it wasn't like I was a complete mess you know I was, no but also don't judge like just go as you please I mean even if you are gonna judge why were you why are you judging the Asian girl <laughs> I'm just saying I, I know there's a stereotype that we always go for the designer <laughs> shit but like just give us <laughs> some respect you know and so I walk in with my um, good friend at the time and she also had like a Louis I think it was a Louis scarf that she put in as a belt it was super cute and they did not acknowledge us they did not say hi welcome anything they didn't mm -hmm. ask if they needed if we needed any help looking for anything they gave us a side eye and completely like went into the back well I think as a business owner you can't judge Exactly. Even as a person. Yeah. I always say you're always going to be a successful business owner if you have a good heart. Yeah. So like those prejudices you have or stereotypes you have against people, you lose. You're, yeah. you're fucking yourself over. I know. It just needs to go out the back door. But there have been times where I've like judged someone early on and then they ended up being completely, completely different. different. Yeah. yeah. And that's how I usually feel about some of my clients like they either don't give me any personality beforehand and I kind of have to imagine it, mm -hmm. you know, but as soon as we build that rapport, it's like so fun and they're like incredible human beings that yeah. just leave such an impression on you. Mm -hmm. And so like, I just, I, I just don't understand like me walking in there, they don't acknowledge me at all. And I'm just like, what did I do wrong? And you never know what someone is going through. Exactly. So you kind of I like, maybe understand. someone like, <laughs> yeah. in their lives died and they just need a Louis purse to make their lives a little better yeah, or something. <laughs> Retail therapy. Yeah, exactly. So I um, I left the Louis store and we went right across next door to Prada. And I oh. spent, um, I think I've spent like, a, I bought a wallet, the red um, tiny wallet that I got because I was like one of my first purchases, like a designer purchase on my own. So I didn't go too crazy, but then the following year I did. I tried it out again. I stood in line to Louis. I didn't make an appointment, unfortunately, but I went in and I same shit happened. Didn't acknowledge wow. me, and I'm just like, what is happening? And it's funny because um, six months before my birthday, my mom went in and was looking for bags. She's not like me. She likes to look, um, but she was like, oh, I heard from my daughter that you disrespected her when she walked in. And you know how many bags I've bought in the store. Mm -hmm. And literally, they did not know what to say besides bring out champagne for us. Are you Isn't serious? That, yeah. I was just like, so you have nothing to say for yourself that you didn't yeah. acknowledge my presence, nor did you give me any sort of respect as a customer that's walking mm -hmm. in. Even if I don't buy anything, 
That well, exactly. Mean, you don't have to buy anything no. to be respected yeah, by, like, exactly. a human, as a human being. Yeah, so uh, I did not <clears> buy anything <throat> with my mom. I took her next door to Prada, and she and I both bought a bag. So that's how your Prada addiction started. Yep. <laughs> oh, I should have named I, – I mean, Louis – it's, it's a like, cute name for a Louis dog. is a cute name. Maybe I should have named him Prada like uh, Lydia did in Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I watched that show and I was like, I'm going to get a dog name at Prada. But I never had anything from Prada. But now I do. Now you do. Third dog. Yes. Oh, my God. Do not, sell, do not tell me to get a third dog because I probably would, knowing me. Yeah. Um, I was surprised you got the first one. <laughs> Oh my gosh, With I can't believe family. we totally just sidetracked to like talking about designer shit. That's <coughs> so on brand for us. Um, so you were in for Paris. For you. <laughs> yes, it is for me. Per. Um, so you went to Paris and you got back. Are you like working again? I worked the same day I got home. So tell me the timeline. So I think my flight, I have, oh my gosh, it was like a 14 hour flight or 14, 15 hours of traveling. Oh, no, I worked the next day. I got home around 6 p.m., picked up my dogs, my kids, and then... She also has two dogs. Yes. Um, what did I do? Unpacked, cleaned a little bit, and then went to work the next morning. Yes. Well, she's lucky because she has her studio in her apartment. Yes. So clients home can based. just come to her. She doesn't need to leave early or, like, mm -hmm. look super presentable. Like, she, she just no, hangs out. No, if you know me, home. I'm never dressed up. I'm never wearing makeup. Like, I think she wore sweats, like a sweatsuit to the club once. Yeah. Didn't you? I wore sweatsuits and my Christian Dior slides. There you go. Sandals. She, yeah, she wears her Christian Dior slides to her workouts as Those well. Those are my dailies. Yeah. Like, she does. She pulls squats. <laughs> Christian Dior is on. But I love that for you. Um, I feel like we're both those type of people that just never find a break. If we have a time set for breaks we insert clients into there. Oh my there. gosh, yes. I don't we know. do it for each other yeah, all the time. Like, uh, I took her senior pictures on the 11th of this month, mm -hmm. May, and or April. I'm like fast forwarding. What <laughs> month is it? It's, it's almost April. May. Yeah, it's almost okay. May. So I took her photos April 11th and that day was actually my only one and only day off that I had set yes, for myself. Yes, I love you. Thank you. And but she knew I would change my mind. Yeah. Because I so wasn't going to do it. She wasn't going to take her senior pictures. Like, why the hell wouldn't you? <laughs> Especially with how much you've accomplished. That's true. Like, Thank you. I The second she was like, I think I want my senior pictures taken by you. And I was like, yes, we are going to do it. <laughs> even, if that, if, even if I have to wake up at the crack ass of dawn, we are yes, going to do she it. She loves me very much. Yeah. It's just, if I had the chance to graduate... I would be making a huge ass deal out of it because of how And I much think that's what led me to change my mind. I was like, I went through too much to not document this. Yeah. Like, this is a big life was accomplishment. Was your fiance, like, totally... He was like, pushing me yeah. to do it. Because I was, like, not even going to walk, not even going to take photos. So are you going to walk? Yes. But I'm at the end of the alphabet, so I'm like... I like it better like that. Why? I'm going to be sitting there all day. Well, you get to take selfies and, like, record okay. everything, soak it all in. True. Well, if you think about it, if you get called first, you literally have to sit there through the entire thing and listen to every name called. Mm -hmm. At least when you're at the end, you're anticipating something. That's true. Besides the end of it. You I know like what I mean? mindset. Yeah. So I think it's a win. Our Well, because our last names are Vo. Or Vasquez <laughs> v, and Vo. The yeah. v, we're in the Vs. That's what I meant to say. But... um. Yeah, no, I remember high school graduation. I was in student council, so we had to sit at the very front and be called last two. Aww. I remember, that's like the last hurrah. That's dude, I remember I was like so numb to the excitement, and I was just like, oh, it's whatever. Like, I'm graduating, finally getting the hell out of here, right? Be proud of yourself. But the second I stepped on the podium or like the stage, um, the person that handed me my like diploma was... Uh, Miss Bunger, she was my math teacher. So freshman year, I got really bullied by this one chick. Like, oh, I'll beat her ass. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> man, go back to those days. So fun. Um, so she knew that I was running for a position in student council, and she purposely ripped off all of my campaign stuff. Are you on, serious? Off the, the poster walls, and Miss Bunger knew it was her. And in the middle of class, she literally yells at 
that chick. Thank God for And she bunker. pulls her aside and she's like giving her a huge ass lecture mm-hmm. about how like if you mess with her, you're going to have to deal with me. Because Jeez. I didn't have any friends. I came from a private school. I yeah. was just a new transfer. And I, I basically became her best friend because I didn't have any friends at the mm-hmm. time. So Ms. Bunger pulls me after class after she had given her the ultimatum. She's like, honey, don't worry. I've got your back. And ever since then, like anyone that talks shit about Miss Bunger, I'd be like, I'll beat you up. I'll oh, and she was you the one that handed you your diploma. She handed me to my That's diploma. So, so it was like sweet. full circle to me. Yeah, like, I, so, so I started bawling my eyes out and I look out to the crowd and everyone's like, Trish, don't cry. Oh. <laughs> don't cry. I feel like we hold in our emotions really well up until we, we get were those built like really that. meaningful moments. We were built moments. to do that yeah. because every time we would get our ass beat by our parents, they'd Why be like, Why are you like, crying? Why are you crying? <laughs> so ungrateful. <laughs> Literally. Uh, and it's like, it's even more special to me to have Francine here as my first guest because we have had kind of very similar upbringings when it came to our parents and b- living life as an Asian, being in an Asian immigrant type of family, Asian American mm-hmm. immigrant type of family. It's like, what did, what were our, like, we can't do's? What are the things that we can no do? No sleepovers, no boyfriend, good grades. We had to have good grades. Um, I was the disappointment which I understand like our parents did move mountains for us to have these opportunities but it doesn't excuse like the toxicity that does come from it the judgment the you know not having a relationship sometimes in certain aspects you know like uh being scared my mom (laughs) my mom and dad are in Vietnam right now they're Mm -hmm. they're there for three weeks and every time I call them they end the phone call with saying love you and they never said that to I you. just got chills saying this and I kind of like my voice is kind of breaking talking about this but like growing up like I never got that mm-hmm. I we, remember we, yeah because we, you would think it was weird my family's like really affectionate yeah like my friends would go on the phone and like talk to their parents and whatever the conversation is and they would always end up with like I love you or love you too or whatever and mm-hmm. I would just be so jealous of that <clears throat> and it's it's really hard because like we're human beings and we crave that love and affection from our parents. And validation. Yeah. We like, for me, I felt like growing up, I needed validation from every single thing that I did. I had to make a huge scene of all the accomplishments that I would have. Or, because I feel like we're never like, I know that wasn't their intention, but no. sometimes we would feel like, they just oh, I didn't do tough. enough. Yeah. Yeah. Tough love is definitely the theme of my family. Yeah, Yours is a lot rougher than mine, I would say. But same idea. Like, yeah. Um, I just remember, like, I would come home from school and they would just be so disappointed in my report cards. And <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to, you know, get them in trouble for saying this, but I mean, it's not like cruel, cruel. Like, I've had friends, Asian friends, that have gone through way more worse of punishments but so if I didn't have like the grades that they liked I would kneel on top of the stairwell for two oh plus gosh. hours I would kneel I would kneel on like hardwood floor and I would face a wall I did not know this yeah so I would face a wall and I would not be allowed to talk and I would have to cross my arms be on my knees and just stare at a wall for two hours just because I didn't so get good That's grades. what I'm saying. Like, I understand and the traditional. The reason why Asian I'm families. so fluent in Vietnamese is my mom, for the nine months of school, she would cut Disney Channel, all like the teen shows that I would, like, all my friends would watch, mm-hmm. like Nickelodeon, all that stuff. She would cut uh, all of that, not, not let me, like, have any access to, like, TV or anything except for <laughs> Vietnamese soap operas. <laughs> so I grew up watching all of those and it would just be like um, Taiwanese slash like Chinese shows that were translated with voiceover uh-huh. of Vietnamese uh, language. And that's how I'm so good at it. And that's all, all you knew. <laughs> yeah. And that was my form of punishment to so that I could focus on schoolwork and nothing else. Jeez. Yeah. And like I've never they've never beat me they like they were super against that but they're like I mean we're not touching you you're kneeling so you're doing the you're doing it to yourself, <laughs> you're doing it to yourself. <laughs> so um me laugh, sorry. yeah no you're fine so yeah that was my form of punishment um but I mean I feel like 
my brother definitely got it worse because he lived in Asia. He lived in Vietnam. Oh my gosh. My brother would tell me like, you won't eat your vegetables. When mom did that, when I did that to mom, she would put me out in the street and there's no lights. And you're Yeah. So my mom, when she went through her first divorce with my brother's dad, Mm -hmm. so he's my half brother. Um, my, he actually, my mom was like pissed off at like his dad. (laughs) This is so stupid. But basically my mom would say like, you look so much like your father pisses me off. Oh, so she would beat his ass and then put him out in the street at like, you know, during ghost hours, like, like three to four in the morning. So he would be booted out of the house. He would have to do that kneeling thing where you're facing a wall. So he'd be out on the streets in Vietnam. It's like so spooky. There's no street lights. It's it's like third Mm -hmm. world country. It's third world country. There's no like street lights or anything. And there's no one around. And he could have sworn he saw like a figure just standing there watching him. And yeah, so... Asians are just so creative with their form of punishment. Like, the belt is so last decade. <laughs> so last decade. That was so old. But, yeah, now they're getting pretty creative with how they're <laughs> punishing their kids. Yeah, I lean up to kneel for hours. Yeah. I mean, they don't, they don't, they respect me enough to not, you know. The, the most they do is just yell at me if I, like, talk back at them. But in the end, they know that I've got – p- I'm a pillar in the household now. No, so. I agree. I feel like I didn't get the respect until I proved myself. Isn't but the crazy? issue is, like, why did I have to prove myself? Like, I'm your sister. I'm your daughter. Like, yeah. Um, why do I have to be providing something or accomplishing something to be respected? Because it's not like I was – I'm sure I had an attitude because you know how oh controlling gosh. Asians can be. But yeah, no, I feel like we, it's hard for us to talk back and like stand up for ourselves. But once we do and we set those boundaries, it's almost like they kind of are confused by it. Mm-hmm. They're like, wait a minute, they have a voice of their own. This is not allowed. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I feel like my family was a little different. Um, we did have boundaries, it was just hard to like consistently hold the boundaries for towards each other hold them ourselves accountable for that my parents literally gave up on me really i think it was just because i lucked out on being the second oh on child. boundaries on boundaries boundaries but like also like what they required of me and what they expected out of mm-hmm. me like the whole grade thing i think i was like a sophomore in high school and they were just like as long as you're passing we're happy i'm wow. like okay <laughs> okay i'm making my way <laughs> yeah so uh i kind of slowly like <laughs> This is kind of sad, but, like, I had to disappoint them over and over and over again for them to be, like, okay, okay, I'm going to let loose. I'm going to let loose because she's not capable and she's not made for this. And I think it was really hard for them when my brother dropped out of college and then I did, too, because the conversation that we had, it was very easy. But, yeah, I could feel that almost, like, fear from my mom. It was, like, what is she going to do now? But it was like, it took me two years to mm -hmm. like, from 2020 to 2022, I literally told my mom that I dropped out of college when I had dropped out in spring of 2020. So long ago. Yeah. I dropped out spring of 2020. And then I told her March of 2022. Mm -hmm. Well, it's because that fear. February. I told her February. You want to make them proud. That fear is instilled in you. Um, but also I think it's like the tough love that I touched on earlier. Like your mom just wants you to be okay. And you know, like I, cause they're worried about yeah. what happens after they mm-hmm. die. The intention. They think yeah, so exactly. far ahead of they time. They think so far ahead. It's cause they love us, but also like things like delivery are really important. And I think that's one yeah. thing that Asian families forget the, the importance of delivery. And it's also like they, I don't know. It's just like. Why do I have to have such a an established career in order to earn their respect? Oh, like that's, that's our exactly ongoing problem that we're getting. That's exactly here. how I felt. And I feel like we're we're both getting to the point with our parents and our families and siblings and whatnot to where like we're at a good place where we're hustling just as much as they are. So they feel Oh, my family they worked feel hard okay for me. Yeah. Yeah. They worked so hard for me. And that literally brings up like the reason why I wanted to bring you in here and talk to you and have this conversation is like 
what are your thoughts on the hustle culture? Like, is it toxic? Or is it is it like good? Is it motivating? Or like, what are your thoughts on it? I think it depends on the perception and how seriously you take it. Yeah, I think hustle culture um, can be toxic to the point where like, um, you're comparing like, I'm not doing good enough because I see this person and they're making this much money working this amount of hours, like, and so on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I know everyone says the grind is real or whatever, but I just feel um, like I am always so rewarded whenever I post how busy I am. Mm hmm. But they don't realize I'm literally, like, crumbling in my head. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, social media, too, like, can be very misleading. Obviously, we're going to post the highlights of our life. We're going to... The that's best why, parts. Yeah, perspective and perception yeah. is real. Like, you can't just assume... No one's life is perfect. Like, I... Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, myself, am very guilty of hustling very, very, like, Deeply to the point where I don't sleep or I don't eat or I don't drink water yeah. or I don't go to the bathroom even. Yeah. Like I who you should not push yourself to the point where you're not really being yourself. Yeah. I, I feel like I was almost brought into this world to work and it's a long story. But basically when my mom had her nail salon, I started working at the age four. of four. Yeah. Um, so I just imagine this little toddler sitting at the reception desk. Um, welcoming the clients in, having them signing in, asking them what their service is, telling them how long the wait time is. Then I would run and turn on the spa chairs, turn on the water, prep everything. Mm -hmm. And then at the age of 12, I was disguising myself as a 16-year-old. To work. To work. Yep. But as you know, we need a license for that. Mm -hmm. So all of my mom's OG clients would be my clients because they – they don't literally watched yeah. me grow up yeah. and so they they trusted that I could execute the job because I grew up watching it and uh, like we said before we had no play dates we didn't have like time to hang out with friends or be a normal kid like for me I never had a Saturday where I could go to my friend's house and go to the pool I never had real vacations our vacations consist of us going to california going to uh you went to california a lot. little saigon town yeah. which is uh westminster and like garden grove and we would go buy supplies go eat at some asian restaurant and then we go would home. drive home yeah that's your vacation and then the next day it was just school go out to the salon work, work. And so when I would get the opportunity to actually have real vacations, like my friends would invite me on to trips to California or something, I would be like, oh, I can't go. It literally pained me to not go. Yeah. And not saying, I mean, I had a little more leisure than you did. Um, so. I mean, you had volleyball and all that yeah, stuff. I was, so you had like your other mm -hmm. circle of friends. And I had with. siblings. Like I have four older siblings yeah. that took me out. Thankfully, I'm very thankful for them. Yeah. And my you had mom like especially. a better relationship with your brother and mm -hmm. your sisters than like all that stuff. But like for me, I had one brother and our age gap is what, like a yeah. decade. And over. I feel like you guys weren't close till recently. No, no. I grew up and <laughs> God, this is another traumatic experience that I'm unraveling for you guys. But my mom or not my mom my brother <laughs> so when he came over to the states and he immigrated here um he barely knew any english mm -hmm. he went to some esl classes but like he barely knew anything and i was the one teaching him words and stuff like that we were driving i was about like six years old or something i was an idiot we were driving by um the superstition mall and you could see this furniture store it's called lazy boy uh -huh. i was like oh it's lazy boy my brother thought i was talking about him oh so he got home and he was like cussing me out and he like it's like you called me lazy oh honey honey that's not even the worst of it he chased me around with a knife oh my god he chased me around with a knife yes so we, that obsessive. is like the epitome of our friend, our, our, I called it a friendship Brother. because like it does not even feel like a sibling, you know, related. but like Brother. we were never close. Like we could never see eye to eye. I was always too young for him. He was always too old for me. I just never was able to relate to him to anything until recently when COVID happened, he had to move back in to live with us because his wife was constantly getting sick and. Um, so he shipped her back to Vietnam to live there for good. So now they have like a long distance he marriage. Shipped her. <laughs> shipped her off. 
<laughs> yeah. So she lives in Vietnam now and he's just going to work here for six months, live in Vietnam for six months. And it's just going to be like that cycle over and over wow. again for them to sustain. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's going to last very long because she's a gold digger. Well, obviously. <laughs> We've known that for 10 years. Yeah. 10 years of our friendship. No, I remember like telling Francine like, this bitch is such a gold digger. Like, oh my god we didn't even know that they got married yeah love is blinding yeah and so like the only reason why we've gotten so close the past like two years during during covid is mainly because of my hustle like how hard i work i proved to him that i am just as a hard worker as he is because he has this thing it's like a competition he's like I don't need to prove myself to mom or to anyone, Mm -hmm. but he loves to flaunt how busy and how much money he makes and all this stuff. And then I started doing that to him and somehow that just created this beautiful, like, like family dynamic for us two. It's so weird because you would think we would have more in common and something to link us better than money and our businesses, you know, but I will take it. I've always wanted a close relationship with my sibling or whatever, and mm-hmm. I finally have it. And he's back in Vietnam now and living his life. Do you think that dynamic, because my siblings are at least, my sister's 19 years older than me. The sibling closest to me is 11 years older. Mm-hmm. So do you think it's the difference, like you're Vietnamese and I'm Filipino? Do you think it, that's what causes, because I was close with my siblings. Um, growing up I don't so really like, know because there's Asians as you know an entirety and then different I feel like Filipinos are really big on family though. yeah exactly like, so they, that's what I'm thinking they will literally kill for each other mm-hmm. and Vietnamese people are really good at abandoning each other and <laughs> that's how I see it from my perspective like, I feel like you guys hustle very hard but I feel for, like that's and that's like, how you show your love to th- each other. That's our love language is like showing acts of service. Acts of service, not well, mm, maybe giving too. Giving is my family's. So the reason why it's not my love language is because I was like thrown so many expensive things when I was growing up. Like when my family finally was making money through their salon mm-hmm. way back when, they would just you know, take care of me by taking me to swim classes. They literally tossed me in any extracurricular that I ever was interested in. Uh And they were like, that's our way of showing that we love you and we care about what you want. And I just, I didn't want those things. I wanted the I love yous. I wanted hugs. I wanted like Saturdays off to hang out. I wanted like us to have dinner. (laughs) together sorry music just went on um but I just really wanted a just normal close verbal relationship with my family Mm. members but they never gave that to me because they didn't know how and they also thought that it would like I always wanted these like really close relationship verbally with my family members but they never gave that to me and so now growing up I don't want like the physical gifts I don't care about that stuff like for me if I want something I'm gonna go get it myself like if I wanted a Prada bag I don't want my boyfriend to get it for me you're gonna get it for yourself yeah and I think that's like uncalled for and like weird to some people because like like, what are you supposed to give give each other for anniversaries, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, I think I struggle thinking about that sometimes. So I'm like, what do I want from my significant other besides, like, to for them to show that they care physically, like, mm-hmm. like through gifts? I'm like, what, what would I even ask for that from I them? I would ask for trips. <laughs> that is true. Because it's so thoughtful. Like, John, my fiancé, literally spent hours and over days, like, planning every itinerary for every trip Paris in particular though that was like by the minute and if an we itinerary. had extra time then what boy does that like he really loves me like that I would much rather have than you know a purse yeah. or you know a ring or show off that bling. my nails broken <laughs> <laughs> the one that she shows off the yeah. most um but that effort you know of planning that instead of just like oh let me just buy this for you yeah, no. And I didn't realize that till I was older because I had, I may have had, you know, rough 
family chaos and I'm very traumatized from that. But overall, my family has always loved me and I've always loved them. Like, I appreciate that very, very much Mm -hmm. to the point where now, now I don't want material things. But when I was younger and we didn't have money and I'd be like looking at my friends and we went to a private school. So everyone had nice cars. I had to buy my own first car. Yeah. I had to work 40 hours as a 16 year old. Like I didn't have money, but these kids were so privileged. They're getting money handed to them. They're getting everything paid for. They didn't have to worry about what they bought or what they spent um, or the things they did where I had to do that. They were paying for those uniforms. Yeah. that was My mom, well, at the time we weren't like as like, what's the word? Not like we weren't as well off as we were when I was going to the school. So it wasn't a huge problem, Mm -hmm. I would say, because like when we were friends in junior high at the private school, like our business, our family business was doing fairly well. And that was until I left private school. Uh That was kind of like the downhill moment for my family's financials. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why I started working even more as a kid, like when I started high school. And um, but the thing is, I when I was younger, I wanted material things because that's what I didn't have. Isn't that crazy? But now that I'm older, I'm like, I can get that for myself. Like, yeah. I don't need that to show you to show me like how much you love me. Like, that's not I, an indicator. I find that of how much so you love fascinating me. that like our love languages are different of, <laughs> yeah. they're different but like it's and rooted through times. like how we were raised yeah exactly that's what I was trying to say earlier maybe I just couldn't describe it like it's it's kind of hard too yeah. but like I like what's my top love languages it's like uh words of affirmation is the first one just telling me that you care about yeah, me yeah I mean you almost cried when you said yeah like, when I said I'm proud of you yeah no it's and like I want to get a tattoo eventually it's gonna be I swear all of my tattoos are just words and letters I have two it's the t and then the create on the side of my boob be a book yeah but like I want to get proud of you um on like the side of my arm and it's just like it's like a reminder that I don't need that from other people because everything that I've done, I've done to make myself proud. Mm -hmm. And it's not like a proud of you in the aspect of someone telling me it's like me reminding myself that I am proud of me, you know, but that is for, (laughs) thank you. I love you. Um, that's like for another time, probably, Mm -hmm. um, maybe when, I don't know. Maybe when my mom goes on another trip to Vietnam, (laughs) I'll get that. And when I'm home alone, um, but I was going to ask you, oh, yeah, I was going to tell you guys my love languages. I kind of just, like, skipped over, but uh, words of affirmation, physical touch. Isn't that funny? Because I never got that. <laughs> um, and then what was the other one? It was, like, it's just, like. Acts of service? Uh, kind of. Is it, what was the, what were the other ones? I know gift giving is one, but that's, I like, that's, all like. I know is I need all of them. <laughs> that's like, my love we language. We lack all of it. We we need it all, which I'm sure John is mentally prepared to give that to you for life. Yes, he does. And Blessed. I think that is kind of like where I wanted to like segue into is like, what do you think about like this hustle culture and like for me especially like I want you to like kind of like examine me like how do you think hustle culture is kind of interfering with my love life and like how oh, I can improve. do you really want me to go there right now oh we will go there oh, okay. because I'm sure there are other people that are in the same <laughs> boat where they constantly work and they don't know how to meet people or how to approach yes. relationships well first of all I think I'm just gonna be flat on flat out honest I feel like a lot of people our age we're more mature than they are I find That's it true. hard for us to relate to people that are our age because of the way we grew up yeah also because we own a business you're working 25 8 for yourself yes. if you're not to doing one forget thing 24 7 we yeah, are it's, past that that's it's so, 25 8 yeah and you're doing everything you're doing the accounting you're taking your photos you're doing your social media so I think you need to find someone that is open-minded someone that's considerate um, considerate of your time. I used to get into arguments with all, um, I've only had two boyfriends. Um, <laughs> um, but I used to get in arg- into arguments because I've worked since I was 16. So since my first boyfriend, I've always worked. Yeah. And then I would get mad because I'm like, I only have very little time 
to hang out with you. Like, I would like, you know. And us spending time yeah. and making time for them. Time is should, money for us. Time is for money. Anyone, if we're making time, time back, for them, that should be yeah. a sign that we actually care for them. Time is non-refundable. Yeah, because if, like, for example, like, my last relationship that never came into fruition into anything real. See, this is what I was going to touch on. Yeah, I, <laughs> I put everything in it in my perspective like I feel like I put I tried so hard because I also never had the experience of be having a boyfriend and knowing mm-hmm. how to make time for someone so I was fairly new to but it but you did it well I think that you know this person just was a nice guy but he also needs to understand you're a business owner you're a young successful business owner and the sky is the limit for you you know, you have very and I'm not just time. taking care of myself. You're taking care of your family. Yeah. And, and you like, and your dogs. Like, and like you can't. thinking about how, like, family is so important to him and, like, all that stuff. He's also, like, person of color. He should understand that, But like, the thing is. It's important. He's also privileged in a way that he didn't have to grow up taking care of his family. Yeah. And that's where the the way that we did. Yeah. That's the disconnect that I have with a lot of people my age, our age. Yeah. Which is why we're so close because we can come to each other and you'd be like, oh, I completely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Because I know I'm, I wouldn't change it like a thing. I would honestly die for my family, for my friends, but um, miss those sleepovers though. Yeah. (laughs) But. It's a lot. It's taxing. <laughs> it really is. And I I genuinely feel like I, I've, I've thought about this over and over again because when you end things with someone, you constantly think, what did I do wrong? What could I do better in the future? And what can I take away from this? Um, I think it was really important for me to emphasize that I need to find someone that is – I don't need them to be – hustling like I am per se no but I think you need them to understand your hustle yeah and not you know and be considerate of your time you know you have very few spots open to just honestly take a nap or like (laughs) do something for yourself and those naps I do miss them yeah and they need to they need to realize oh shit like I should make time at this time because that's your only time yeah to come see me and like I constantly like think about this all the time it's like will I be able to handle a relationship for real especially someone that doesn't really relate to me in the side of like the aspect of a of like being a businesswoman you know Mm -hmm. also I have a stuffy nose that's coming in because the room's kind of cold me too I'm like freezing (laughs) we're okay we're okay but anyways I I think it's really important for me to find someone that is just passionate like madly passionate about something they have to have their own niche yes. like you do. Yes. I mean. Every guy that I've ever like tried to pursue was driven and like passionate about like crazy about something. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that I am attracted to and I always have been. I forgot what I was going to say. But basically, I think you need someone understanding. Yeah. You know, what was I going to say? A lot of arguments in my relationships, not even romantic, have been because uh, either one of us or both of us are not too. on the same page. Yeah, I feel like a successful relationship has to be, you know, you have to be, be between two like-minded people. You have to be, have the same values. You have to have... Because we don't have shifts. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, we don't have shifts. We're working all day. Yeah, because like... Replying to clients. I mean, people like, think I have the, like you know just the shoot and I, then mean, I go home and edit at night or daytime whatever and then I have the day to myself or whatever no you know, <laughs> no like let me let me pan this out for some of you guys to understand what's going on in my life so I wake up I feed my dogs let them out brush my hair you know get myself tidied up then I go online and I answer all these emails there are hundreds and hundreds hundreds of emails and I'm so grateful for them coming in because I wouldn't be where I am today without mm-hmm. them but, like, I cannot remember. So I have, like, I, I, my mom literally the other day, she was like, I feel so bad that I never took prenatals when I was pregnant with you. Oh, uh, it's not and I think she, I was, she was like, I think you're, like, dumb because of it. And I'm like, 
<laughs> you just call me flat out dumb, mom. Like, oh. thank you, but no, I did not need to hear that I was dumb. But anyways, so like, you know, you know how Asian moms are. They're so flat out honest. I mean, I feel like I'm that way and you're that way. We're just outspoken. Yeah. But remember before, like, we used to be pushovers. Like, oh, 100%. You could literally step on our toes. I mean, people still do. I mean, mm. we have better boundaries yes. on our businesses, but when it comes to friendships, I still feel like I want to be as much of a people pleaser as I can be without it being, like, way too much and pushing me to that point. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I will still always... You're working towards it. No, for sure. And, like, when it comes to friendships, I will always try my best to understand. And before, it's all me, me, me. Like, I only want to listen to my side, and that's it. That's the right side. That There's no other perspective that needs to matter. But now, when it comes to my friendships, I will always be like, what can I do to change? And why are we at this point? Mm. Like, what made you upset with me? And I I will always ask that, you know? I feel like you always hold yourself accountable, but don't do that at the expense of your, you know, where you're not even in the wrong. Yeah. And I, I have seen instances where you've done this. Way more than it yeah, should. And I'm guilty of it too. But like, I just, I, I, just, <laughs> I, I kind of sanity. like I'm learning from my mom. So she used to be a very intense and like cutthroat woman when mm-hmm. she was in her 30s and kind of 40s. But when she hit her 50s, she kind of cooled down a lot. And I kind of adopted that from her. So she would like she loved getting into fights. Like she <laughs> not what like side fist, is she? <laughs> not fist fights, not fist fights, but like she loved arguments and she loved to like pick people's brains and win. And like say these little side comments that were that seems nice at the moment, but once you really think about it, you're like, what the fuck? Like that was kind of a... Like, hold on. Yeah, wait a minute, you know? So she loved doing that in her 30s and 40s because she was conniving, you know? She was very interesting as a 30-year-old. But now she's very, like, forgiving and patient, and she does not argue back. She just sits there and listens. Wow, do you think it's because she went through too much and she doesn't have the energy? She, no, she just thinks it's not worth it. That's what I'm saying. She well, doesn't have the energy she's also, time for that. She's also going through this time in her life where she's very... She's channeling her most inner Zen Buddhist side, and she's like, Buddha would forgive. And I'm like, but we're I not mean, Buddha. We're uh, not Buddha. I can't be Buddha. Like, I am, I'm a pretty forgiving slash, like, patient person, I would say. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to certain things, and also especially if it touches my business or my name and it tarnishes my name in any way, yes, you will hear it from me. Like, good luck. Yes. Like, Anything that, in like, in any way makes my name seem negative, like, my business comes off as not as good anymore, or who I am as a person, my character, if that touches my name, hell will be there, you know? So, I, I'm just saying, you guys can, you guys can do anything you want to me and say whatever you want, but if it Once affects it's your my business, business, it's my child. That is your baby. Well, no, I wanted to say that. I don't even want a child. Like, this is my child already. About your... Like, previous, like, fling. I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> You're almost boyfriend. Yes. But I think he didn't understand, like, this is how you take care of your family. This is how. This is your livelihood. Yeah. And if you can't, if he can't understand the amount of work that goes into that, you're providing for more than one person other than yourself yeah. and it if, will always be like that yeah and until they are in so their you grave, either probably. you that's what i'm saying why you need an open-minded person you can't be stuck in this little tunnel vision of like no it has to be this way yeah and like i'm contracted with my clients like it's not like exactly. a lash appointment where you can be like oh i'm sick so let's reschedule. I can't reschedule a wedding because I'm having a little tickle in my throat. Exactly. Or I have an ear infection and my ears ringing and I want to cry my eyes out. Honestly, but I can't. mind over matter. Like that's always yeah. what I what I think. And I think people are slowly starting to realize this about me, but I live to work. A lot of people will not agree with that lifestyle. Mm hmm. Do you, you think it's toxic for yourself to live to work? Oh, 100%. Like, because I'm, I'm never going to feel enough. You know, it's never going to be enough. I'm I'm always going to constantly push myself to do better, grow, learn more, pay for these workshops, and learn more about photography and how I can 
be better and, you know, make my clients' experiences better each time. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like I will always try to prove to my family that I'm worth being respected. Mm-hmm. Which comes hand in hand of like full circle of what we've been talking yeah, about. Exactly. It's like it all connects. Yeah. Like we work so that we have that respect, but with that respect. But what it's such a fine line between like toxic and like, wow, I'm proud of myself and I'm I wanna still be, sane. I like, want to be proud of myself. I be want proud to of be. yourself. I am proud of myself. <laughs> Let me correct myself. Thank you. I am proud of myself. I just feel like I'm going in the toxic route but I also don't mind it (laughs) I feel the same I try to go you know the former side where I'm like still sane still proud of myself but then I find myself being like oh I could take this client even though I have it blocked off or yeah let me work 16 hours that's freaking ridiculous exactly and so like it's just I feel like it's never gonna end for us which is why it's toxic yeah because you know how, like, once you've, like, quote, unquote, made it in you just, your life. Well, now you see what you're capable of, and then you push yourself harder. Exactly. Like, you you were <coughs> you were doing well with, this, like, your lashes and all that stuff mm-hmm. and the brows and, like, your clientele. You're booming. You literally started two years ago, and you're here with, like, full clientele. You're teaching people how to lash properly, too. Side note, if you do want to learn how to do lashes the proper way... Um, go hit up Francine for education. She is amazing. Oh, and I've, <laughs> I've literally heard so many great things about her students like succeeding after taking her course. So if you're interested in it, reach out to what's your handle? Lashed X Francine on yeah. Instagram. There you go. Oh. She will uh, teach you all that you need to know and stuff about, you know, people that are allergic to lashes like me and me <laughs> yeah she just she just started to develop her my allergy yeah it sucks pain That's I, why literally, I look like a gremlin right now i'm going through a little <laughs> you know body dysmorphia when i look at myself in the mirror because i'm like where are my eyelashes <laughs> dude we just took bomb pictures outside don't That's worry true. we did take <laughs> pictures outside the studio before we went in <laughs> but um yeah no i think Back to being like the whole live to work type of deal. I I need someone that understands that lifestyle and can under and not hold me back, you know, mm. because a lot of these I don't want to say men, but I want to say boys that I've met. They say boys, they work, <laughs> they work so that they can live and enjoy their lives, which I completely understand why your life is so like unpredictable and you live once But I want my legacy to be that I've always taken care of my family Mm -hmm. and I've always put everyone else before. And you're always striving to improve and better yourself. I'm okay with being put second. That's the sad part. It's like, I'm, I'm, how do I, how do I phrase this? I am happy making other people happy. I, okay. Everyone knows I literally find joy. This is why I thought I had to be a doctor because I wanted, you know, to help people to provide and um, build the relationships of care and giving because I literally find joy in giving to others. Mm -hmm. I will literally give like the shirt off my back before myself, you know, to someone else before myself. Bitch, you literally pay for tables at the club when it's time for you. Uh Oh my god, I don't want to talk about that. Not doing that anymore. Please don't. Like <laughs> that's so I much mean, money. I mean, the I'll... next time that you should do that is probably for your bachelorette or something. But I f- at the same time, people should be pitching in for that shit. I know. I'm just saying. I mean, sometimes they do. I've only done it twice, but the first time was like a misunderstanding. Like I thought I was paying for half, and I didn't pay for half. Yeah. Like, but it honestly would be cheaper if everyone pitched in exactly. because then you're paying what you're yeah, actually like, pay. Yeah, like, it would be one thing if you, like, paid for, like, the initial of it and then people just start paying you back the night mm-hmm. after. Like, that's totally fine. But, like, you... Oh. I know. I've dug myself a hole so many times. I just... I, it sucks <laughs> because people be like, oh, Francine will totally do this for you. Actually, both probably before. But now, like, I'm so nice and so giving. Maybe we should talk about that one girl. 
<laughs> oh, we definitely need um, to. Uh, so that you know not to be that girl. Yeah, don't be that girl. Don't fucking piss me off, actually. Yeah. Don't do me wrong, because I'm so nice. But the minute you do something that is out of line, you're dead to me. Which is kind of hard for you, because me and Trish are very loyal. We're very giving. Like, yeah. there's... We're probably going to be your biggest supporters of each other, so... Yeah. But I think as a business owner... I don't think I would have been the way I am now, you know, like yeah. being confrontational or setting boundaries. I am not confrontational Or calling at someone. All. You're not. <laughs> but you're, you're going to get there because I never thought, would you think I would have been like this, like seventh grade me to no. now? No. Us being the pushovers that we are. Yeah. I mean, I probably would have let anyone walk all over me. However, I will be the first one, you know. To spoil my friends and to give them what they need and be the friend that helps them, you know, probably till the day I die. Yeah. And I, I hope some of my friend, my best friends are listening to this. I don't expect you to, but I would love if They're you listening. are. They're <laughs> listening. We all are. love you, Trish. <laughs> um, well, basically, I'm, I just want to like hit on this part where I emphasize like just because I'm not seeing you like what every two weeks or once a month or whatever, that doesn't like make us not oh my close. gosh yes I feel this way I feel bad sometimes but also like if you're my friend and you know me deeply you're you're gonna know that I have a lot on my plate just as you do too so that's what I really appreciate about our friendship is that we can literally go a week or four months six months a year but we will still pick up at right. the time uh, yeah. you know you know yeah. same and I've had very hard, I've had very hard conversations with like, like less than a handful of my friends because they felt that, well, some of them thought that I wasn't prioritizing the friendship anymore. And they also thought that uh, like they were the second choice friend because I was hanging out with like a new group or whatever the case Mm -hmm. is. And it's like, I kind of hyper fixate on like friendships. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, which is, it kind of kind of shitty of me if i'm gonna be real here but like i'll hang out with like one say, group and then the other and then like, i'll only hang out with that group for like six months and then i'll kind of forget about the other group and it's like that does not mean that i don't care about you or you're not as close of a friend to me anymore mm-hmm. it's just like i'm trying to build something that will last because i know i've already done that to this friendship you know what i yeah. mean but in their eyes it makes it seem like oh she found someone new she doesn't need me anymore and she only like hits on me when it's convenient or when they are busy or whatever the case is. But like, really, it's not like that. I at really all. think it's just you only have so much time. And, and I'm trying so hard. And yeah, I, I think that's I one of you. my other questions is just like, how do you how do you just balance friendships with like how much we work? OK, so particularly I feel your struggle with this topic very deeply because It pains me to be like, oh, I have to save money or I'm busy with this. Like I have school, I have my business, I have family. Like it pains me. But ultimately, like my priorities are, you know, my family, myself and my business. And a true friend is going to understand that, that all three of those things for me personally take up a lot of time. Right. So. This is probably the first time in my life where I've felt comfortable and happy, like, with my friend group. Um, But basically, like, how I handle that, like, I have to schedule months in advance, literally six, four to six months in advance. We have to book our our play dates. like, go to my website if you want to hang out with me. No, um, it's so funny because, like, I actually had this conversation with Skylar the other day, and I think it wasn't the other day. It was, like, a while ago. But I felt like yesterday. But um, we talked about how it was so easy for us to just be like, hey, you want to hang out when we were in high school? <laughs> yeah. And right? we just like drive over to each other's places and then have a, have a day. But now with our businesses taking off and she's picking up all these shifts at BlackRock and just like she has a life now. She has like two mm-hmm. jobs and like trying to help her family business. It's like 
we have to plan these things. Exactly. And it's such a weird thing to open your eyes and be like, whoa. Yeah. That's the difference of like high school friendships and lifelong friendships. And that's the beauty of, I mean, you don't have to be long-term friends to understand that. No. I just, I don't know if it's difference in maturity, but more so like understanding the ability to understand someone else and yourself like is really important in a friendship so that's helped me like god bless my friend tatum (laughs) my crazy little friend tatum love her but i i wasn't in town for her birthday i was in the philippines because a family member passed yes and i felt terrible but obviously i'm gonna prioritize my family um and then I'm sure she would do the same. Yeah, and she would. Yeah. And so I had actually planned like another day where I would throw her a little party for her birthday. A little soiree. Yes. However, that was a very hard week for me. I think I was just in a little depression rut. I was overworked. I was working 16 hours. And then you didn't sleep. Seven days before my trip to the Philippines, seven days after. And then to combat like going on an unplanned trip. Yeah. So I was working way too fucking much. Because you didn't save for that. You no, just had that to was take whatever you planned. had in your checking account yeah. and just be like, okay. Oh, and my apartment took so much money from rent. They took more than one month's worth of rent, which was, well, I won't say, but. Yeah, um, that's insane. So I already had all these things coming at me on top of the things that I was already dealing with. But I honestly, like, told her, I was like, I'm tired, like. I need a mental health day and I'm sorry and I'll make it up to you. And her response was so beautiful. Like she was just like, I understand basically like don't ever feel bad for taking care of yourself. Yeah. That's the friend you need. Yeah. You don't need someone to be like, well, you have had this plan for over a month. Like what the fuck? I know. It's it's just not as easy as people think. No, exactly. Because we have so much going on in front of us and then there's so much that goes on In in our minds. Yes. And it's like, for me, especially, particularly, I feel like my brain works even it's when I'm sleeping. Like, oh, I have dreams. My dream. Oh, I my dreams. dreams. <laughs> I dream about working and, like, how I pose people. And I wake up and I write down, yeah. like, these certain poses and prompts that I have given to my clients in my dreams. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, when can I? When do you not? rest? Yeah. When I'm resting, I'm not really resting. So it's just, like, I'm trying my best. Like, for example, like Ari, my best friend since mm-hmm. what seventh grade when I met her at church camp for the Mormons, um, we see each other every like three months. Yeah, that's three. And she has a baby, and then she has a her sweet baby. Royce baby. He's about to turn a year old, and I literally have not seen him in like two months. But she has never once given me an ultimatum or like doubted our friendship and the level of closeness that we had because she understood that like one she's a mom she's not gonna always be like hey let's hang out or she's consuming herself and like her child you know she's like working to be a mom and Mm -hmm. like all this stuff and I'm working to be a businesswoman and I'm taking care of my family so it's like that understanding is so important and we we both have that and that's why we've never that's why it's working yeah and like sometimes like the past I'm not gonna lie the past like two to three weeks I've been kind of shitty at texting her and like I'll kind of I'm um, so bad at texting I'll I'll literally just I'll open it and won't reply I'll be at your disposal but like I'll text you when it's like important but when it's like oh Royce did this or like I, I just think went I shopping. You. I just went out on aloe and shopped. Like sometimes we'll have those conversations, mm. and I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, love that for you. Like it's like kind of short, and like normal people, normal friends probably will be like, this bitch hates me, or this bitch does not mm-hmm. want to talk to me, or she, like, found someone better. Like they would just like have all these thoughts in their brains and thinking like, oh, she doesn't give a fuck about me anymore. No, no hard feelings. This is just, you know, being friends with yeah. someone, a successful entrepreneur yeah. that's very busy booking exactly. out years ahead. Yeah. So ultimately, like, I just hope people know that, like, if you're going to be my friend, you just got to understand, like, I love you no matter what. And I will be there for you when you need me. Exactly. But you got to reach out. But that's. You got to reach out. Oh, my God. I'm so terrible at checking on my friends. I. And I don't mean it. Like, I think like of them. Tanya, I feel so bad for Tanya. Like, she goes to school. She works at. I think it's called Fate. It's literally right by your house. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that brewery. Uh-huh. Um, but, like, she works a lot, and, like, I don't 
really see her as much as I see like you know Skylar and like I don't know Angie or something like that but like I love her so much and like we've gone through all of college together Mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm sure she's probably like oh we barely see each other like does she still care about me but like truthfully like I think about her all the time no exactly I think about whether like she's doing well or like how are her dogs like how's work and all these things and like it's always happening at the most inconvenient times yeah too. it'll be I'll literally be, like working making a fan I will literally I'm like, be wait yeah I'm like <laughs> shit I need to check on her and then I do my work I do my shoot and then I come home and I literally am like blank Another thing is, like, I don't know if this happens to you, but I will be working a full day and then I get off of work and I lay down. I don't even want to look at my phone. Like, I just want to sleep. It's, it's kind of ironic, though, because it's opposite for me. Because really? Because my business relies on I my mean, phone. I, I don't want to look at my phone, but I'm looking at my phone yeah, yeah. to do my that, work. That I but I really, don't want to, yes. like, have a conversation. Not that I don't want to talk to you. It's I don't have that You know energy. that little red bubble on your phone? I hate your seeing messaging. that. So I have 36, and it used to be at, at it averaged around, like, 150. When I went to Paris, Because I would I think not I open had. my messages because it would overwhelm me. I have 81 right now but just like, in this time I don't, sitting I don't, here. I don't, I, don't, I don't even look at that bubble that's the problem and it i probably should be like getting back to these people but it's just like if it's not like oh, you want to see me yeah then I, i'm see my thing is like growth is for me is like i want to talk to you in person and i want to grow our friendship through seeing each other in person and hangouts and all this stuff and going out to the club or whatever but like texting for me and i was just like uh, oh my god don't text me Actually, don't call me. Text me. But I, I still I don't even want to do that. I, I, like, that's another thing. If I have don't a boyfriend, call me. don't call me because... Or just, like, text me and be like, hey, can I FaceTime you? Like, you remember in Oh, high yeah. School, <laughs> no, we were in junior high, and we wouldn't be able to hang out. Oh, my God. We had FaceTime sleepovers. She would literally play music, or she would watch Teen Wolf with me through the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yeah. So... We need to find our uniforms to oh show. Oh my them. gosh! I think my mom like threw it all away because it, I, I, my mom literally cried when I, she found out that I was getting uh, held back in eighth grade. Oh my god! I forgot. Yeah, and so that's why she moved. That's why I transferred to a public school, guys. You're hearing it here first. I was supposed to be held back in eighth grade because Miss Rollins or Rowland, math. math teacher, yeah. Miss Rowland, she refused to pass me even though I had like a decimal like are you fucking like a, serious like a number off until i could be passing so i had to pull myself out from the pub i was private so sad school. i was so sad yeah she stayed so i uh all these judgmental ass people <laughs> i did not have to see that side of them thank god but i left and i went to a public school and i uh did i tried to do the boundary acceptance with mountain view and Red Mountain because it was right next to my mom's salon. My mom's salon was on Greenfield and Brown. So it was like either or. It was yeah. fine. It was the same distance. And I was not accepted into either of those schools. So you had to go to Desert Ridge. Because my grades were so low and they were like, we can't take you. Oh. Yeah. With the district exception or just because. They would not let me in. They were just like, you're not smart enough. And I was like. Okay. It's a public school. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. okay. But then I went to register. You know what's and- fucked up about the- Miss Rollins not passing you? Love her. She's nice. But there's literally kids. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yes. That would literally take the fucking test home and take the test at home. She had favorites. Not with her, even in high school. Yeah. Like, how are you getting away with this? I don't know, but I was trying so hard to... You know, I was doing tutoring, and I, 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 my mom got, like, three different private tutors to come to my house and tutor me. Or they all you, quit. Do you remember the girls? You know, we weren't a lot. We had these things called sections. We stayed in sections eh, all day. Yeah. Um, 5A, 5C. Yeah, 7A, 7B, whatever. Yeah. But you weren't allowed to move sections. But somehow, these bitches would always get their way and be in the section with their friends and move into the section. I'm like... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you can take home tests. You can get what you want if you give money to the school. If you were in the PTO, you're yeah, in. Yeah, you're in, You got in, everything baby. you wanted. Yeah. My mom <laughs> never showed up once to do those lunch Neither thingies did to volunteer. Yeah. My mom, she was like. She was know. running a business. <laughs> yeah, <so. laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, it was, 
<laughs> Sorry, that just pissed me off a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Where was I in that story? Oh, yeah. So I went and registered myself for Desert Ridge, which is like in my neighborhood. And they were like, we're not supposed to take you, but you live in the district. So like we kind of have to. (laughs) Oh, so it was either Desert Ridge or like the last resort school would be like the school for delinquents. (laughs) Yeah. I was you to- would not last a fucking day in there. <laughs> I was supposed to go to school with the delinquents that were like, you know, in juvie and shit. You literally like shaky like a chihuahua. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, somehow made it into Desert Ridge. And like my first year, I thrived in that school. Like I got A's in every single class. Miss Bunger, my math mm-hmm. teacher, was like, damn, girl, you're smart. And then I um, was very humbled my second year, sophomore year. <laughs> That's when all the knowledge kind of started, like, aligning again, and I wasn't as excelled as everyone else, and that's when my grades started going down, and it just went downhill as we went, and I just barely passed. I So you're supposed to have a 60% to pass high school and, like, graduate. I passed with a 60.04%. Oh. So 0.04. So that all... I, I, you know, want to thank Mr. Wilson, my math teacher. He is the only reason why I passed high school when I was supposed to. And now I take his family photos every single year Mm. with a discount, of course. He deserves it. Love him. I take pictures of his family every year now. And even though when I don't have availability, I make availability for him. I'm like, you are the only reason why I am not still at Desert Ridge (laughs) for another year. Yeah. No, plus I'm pretty sure he was like, get this bitch out of my classroom. (laughs) I'm tired. (laughs) I'm tired. Um, Yeah. I have no idea where we, how we got here, but um, I wanted to also ask you one more question is like, um, when we were like starting our businesses, I'm sure there's a lot of people that like doubted you. Oh yeah, and, like my us. own family was like, "You need to do something with more rigor. Like you're wasting your potential." <laughs> do you think people will continue to doubt you even? Oh yeah, if you've made it. Quote, yeah, unquote. I mean, there's always gonna be jealousy, and honestly, I learned this in high school. No matter what you do, what you say, how you act, how you carry yourself, there's always gonna be someone that doesn't like you. Um, so at that point in high school, I fucking ate in the bathroom with like my one or two close friends. Like, fuck it. I'd eat alone. Like, I would rather do that than be around judgmental people, negative people. Like, also, they just didn't understand my lifestyle, my family, my upbringing, difference in cultures. So I feel like no matter how hard we try to please people. Yeah. That's why I I tell everyone, I tell all my students, like, never compare yourself do what makes you happy like always push yourself you know for the sake of wanting to do it for yourself rather don't do than it for others. yeah don't do it to be better than the person next to you Ooh. or <laughs> you like, know my business actually started off through people doubting me I know I know it's I find that so story. interesting though yeah. because I feel like it was all a competition at yeah first. and you're successful now yeah. And you were back then. Seriously. Yeah. I literally just did a reel, like pulling up all the pictures that I took in high school. I think I charged like people 20 to 50 bucks for a shoot. Yeah. And I'm like, I am so sorry. Yeah. yeah. If I could give you a refund, I would. <laughs> they looked good. <laughs> oh, I just I thought bad. they looked good. You but took my all... senior pictures then. You took my senior pictures yeah. this year. Those, those tones are so dark. So That's dark. Right. I liked it. But I wanted to ask you another question is, what are ways people can support you even without getting a service done? Um, reposting, word of mouth. Word of mm, mouth is crazy. Yeah. I actually prefer word of mouth over Instagram clients. I don't know for you, it may be different, but I love I my get, clients. I get it, like through both, <laughs> so yeah. it works out just fine for um, me. Yeah, I don't know. That's what I I think. It's word a little of mouth, different. Reposting, liking, commenting, yeah, sharing. You have no idea how powerful social media is. No, seriously. It boosts our content up on the, like, the the feed list. Seriously. Oh, my God. I think the first time, I was actually doubting, like, releasing my training dates. Because I was like, I don't know if anyone's going to book. But everyone, I swear to God, we broke Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone was posting it on their story. I was like, she's going to make it whether she likes it or not. Oh, my God. I cried ugly ass tears that day. (laughs) That booked my trainings, all dates booked in 10 hours. I know. 
That's crazy. Um, but like any reel could go viral and then you get 10 new clients from that. Like, yeah, no, your social crazy. media is so on point. Like, oh, it's so much work though. Yeah. I actually, okay, this is kind of hypocritical of me because in my trainings and like, I honestly don't like social media. Yeah. I'm not very good at it. I never try like um, hard enough. To learn about yeah, it. Yeah, to learn it about it, to kind of edit succeed. or whatever, like, but it's free, so, like, use it to your advantage, and that's why I say. Um, I've learned so much about the power of social media yes, and how it you is very powerful. can win, mm -hmm. how you can and win honestly, in this industry. I should have done it. I need to do a, a course. I need to sell a I course. I was going to tell you to do that. To do a marketing that. course, yeah. a branding course or something. So I am good but at basically, shit. I didn't use social media until six months into my business, and I was already established. I already had my clientele. Like I didn't need it. I just was playing around with it one day and then my reel went viral. Yeah. And then that's when I was like, oh shit, like I need to do this more. Yeah. It brings in so much. But I'm still bad at posting consistently. It's hard when, yeah. especially during busy season, which for oh me gosh. is like the nine months of school year. It's mm -hmm. insanity because my clients book me a year ahead of time. And then I'm yeah. like scrambling to make things efficient, like on the admin side of it. So mm -hmm. it's, I'm trying my best to like, do it without an assistant because I'm so hands-on and I just don't like trusting you. You're type anyone. A. Yeah, very type A. And I didn't realize <laughs> that until this year, honestly, because I thought I was kind of a slack off type person where I'm just like laid back and I do whatever. But I'm That's very, <laughs> very type A. But I'm letting go a little bit. I'm trying to. But do it's you have process. do you have any advice for people that are starting in the lashing and like beauty industry? My advice to you would be honestly take the risk. My biggest regret was not starting my business sooner, not believing in myself sooner, not thinking I could do it. Or go anywhere with yeah, it. Yeah, go anywhere yeah. with it. Like, I don't even think we answered the first question, but the very first question of this podcast was, I, I think I was talking about the pandemic and how I was working two hours a day. Hustle and culture. that's not insane. Yeah. That That's not sustainable. Like, I'm taking care of myself. Like, I can't even scrape by taking care of one person with that salary, that that hourly wage. Yeah. So I honestly had, you know, my money was withering away. I had $500 left to my name, and I spent it on a course. And if I didn't take that course, I probably would not be where I am today. Yeah. And I don't know, just take the risk because... Um, I not only learned about business, but I learned how to change myself and, you know, for the better. Like now I'm more confident. Um, I feel like I'm more understanding, but also now have the ability to create boundaries for myself. So yeah. that way I'm not pouring into other people's cup only without refilling mine, because that is a, that has been a trend right. for me my yeah. entire life. Until and these last few years. Yeah. And I feel like because of our businesses, it's kind of shaped us to be the person that we've always wanted oh, to yeah. be. But we didn't realize that until and we I took a step back and realized yes, it. I feel like it made me a stronger woman. Yeah. I made me, it made me, I've always been independent, but I'm so independent now where I don't need anyone. Yeah. I don't need, you know. I, I know I'll be fine by myself. Yeah. We're, but I'm we're blessed gonna, we're that gonna I have. We're going to get by yeah. without anyone's help. That's I'm basically blessed what you're that saying. I do have, you know, my family, friends, my fiance. Yeah. Yeah, but well, take the I hope I hope that with us having this conversation and hopefully you're still here listening, um, that you take this conversation and you reflect on yourself and how you can, you know, better push yourself and how you can balance your work life and be better and how you can you know strengthen your business and your friendships and your relationships with your family members that you know might not particularly believe in what you're doing but I hope you know that like you pushing yourself in what you want to do and believing in yourself is a whole nother level of bravery because there are people out here doing nine to five jobs and they're not doing exactly what they're meant to do and what they're good at and what they're passionate about. And I think for me is like, I'm driven by my passion. Oh and my gosh. I'm so much happier. I date working people that have passions. 25, eight working with something that I really love 
pays way more than any penny like you exactly. know exactly and you're I'm, so much more happier you don't feel yeah, like you're exactly at work. i don't feel like i'm working which is probably yeah. why i'm like yeah i'll take you and yeah. my break time fine yeah. i'll squeeze you in like exactly um so yeah that's the reason why i brought her in today because we both are so crazy driven and i hope that you can take something out of this conversation and learn from it um but with that being said that is our first ever <laughs> episode of trish v talks i of you. <laughs> uh have been dreaming of this for so long and here we are and we are done we did it we did it <laughs> So um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I hope to um, be back with you for the next episode. Have a great day, guys. Bye.